Hey everybody, Gonison on the cover. Today is July 5th, 2019. It is Friday and it's about 8.02 Eastern Standard Time here in New Jersey. We had a very humid, kind of cloudy day today, but it was just dreadfully humid and the clouds are still kind of up there. Skies break through once in a while. There's no wind in the air. Very nice. I like this kind of evening and the temperatures are probably up in the upper 80s right now so we're going to do i'm going to respond to uh, some of the postings i've gotten in regard to stories i've done and also some of the responses to the postings i've made on facebook and the first one has to do with my cop again of the week sean golden child manipulation you know that's the number one thing they've been doing lately all their campaigns are include are targeting children and this one comes from uh, Fox Bear Ninja, I clicked on it, we don't know who he is, so obviously he's embarrassed or has something to hide. And he responds, I think having you talk to children would be far more dangerous. And I replied, to who? You? And Fox Bear Ninja responded again, no, the children of course. I would rather my children respect the law over fearing it and all your cop conspiracy garbage. What would you tell the kids, hey, when you can drive, only roll down your window two inches and refuse to give ID or ask about their oath or what crime you committed? Yes, there are bad cops. Not many, according to this guy, but none of the 20-30% crap. I don't think I ever mention anything about the percentages of cops that are bad. I just do stories about things that cops do to get themselves in trouble. Yes, they set up speed traps to look for speeders. Hey, just don't speed. That's always a go-to excuse, isn't it? That's always the go-to line I hear. Well, you know, if you weren't doing anything wrong, you'd have nothing to worry about. Yeah, okay. I think we got a lot of videos on YouTube about that. How well did that work out for some people? They are here to serve and protect. Uh-oh. We, where have we heard that fallacy before? You point out the few bad cops trying to make them all look bad. Golden is an elected official. He's elected by all his friends because most people just don't vote for the sheriff. They don't bother. They're busy working. If he was so bad, he would not get reelected. Now, I don't think I ever said Sean Golden was a bad person. I happen to know who he is. I happen to have talked to him on one or more occasion. So I know Sean Golden. He didn't get where he's at because he's stupid. And he didn't get where he's bad, where he's at because he was out breaking the law. All I ever said about Sean Golden is that he is the sheriff. He spends a lot of money. He has a police academy that was supposed to cost like 27 million. All of a sudden he came back and added a few goodies to it and asked for 25 million more and the uh, freeholders pulled 25 million dollars out of our taxpayers asses to pay for it uh, so here is my response to that typical response from a sheeple the police are not here to protect and serve Scroll back in my video catalog. I did a video about the job of the police. The job is to, excuse me, I'm always burping, aren't I? I don't know why that is. Their job is to enforce laws, generate revenue, and assist the prosecution. Well, the, the correct description is their job is to enforce laws. Their job is to arrest, gather evidence, and assist the prosecution. The revenue generation is, is something that the town... Uh, administrators encourage them to do because they need that money to finance all the ridiculous pays that they get and the little programs that they want to get. If they don't do the uh, revenue generation, they're going to have to raise your taxes. And that's how the bureaucrats do things. They use these cops. The cops get used by the bureaucrats. So you are incorrect on that. Secondly, I would tell children that they're right, what their rights are. The Bill of Rights was created to stop government overreach. Teaching children how and to exercise your rights is what free people do. Our rights are here to protect us against 
government overreach. The police are not our friends. They are instruments of the government. Keep believing the cop began. Now let me add, the police are not our friends, but that doesn't mean we can't be friendly to them when interacting with them on a friendly basis. Now, if they're pulling you over, that doesn't mean be a jerk to them, just, you know, be polite, but be assertive. You know, a cop pulls you over, don't call him names. Just say, hello, officer, how are you today? What can I do for you? And he starts to ask you questions. You just say, you know, officer, I'm not comfortable answering these questions. I know you're just doing your job, but I I'm not gonna answer your questions, okay? That's being nice, and that's being assertive. So let me explain, you know, this is the crap that I always hear all the time. You know, these are the people that think that the police are all good and wholesome. And maybe some of the police are out there that are good and wholesome. But they're not the ones that are hurting us. It's the bad cops that are hurting us. They are the ones that are beating people up. Go look up Joseph Dixon of the Millville Police Department. He's beat up two people and caused a lawsuit, and I believe he shot and killed somebody. So we have to do stories about the cop, bad cops. We have to let the, the public know what they're up to and how they're costing us money and how they're hurting people and how they're not doing their job and how they should be removed. And the purpose of pointing out the bad cops also is to call out the good cops, say, you know what, you're the ones that are enabling all this crap because you're standing behind that blue line and keep your mouth shut nonsense that you uh, is circulating in your community, the blue line community. So, yeah, I'm going to do these uh, bad cop stories for us. If I see a good cop, which I know there's a good cop out there, he's in Titten Falls. I forget his last name, Schuller. Corporal Schuller. He has to be a nice guy. I've talked to this guy on more than one occasion, and we've talked for probably more than an hour at each one of those occasions. And each time, he's been the same each time. And I look for discrepancies. I'm not totally senile yet in the head that I don't remember things. And I do look for discrepancies when I talk to people on more than one occasion. So I would say Sergeant uh, Corporal Schuler is a good guy. Yeah. I know another cop out there. He's not a cop now. He recently left the force. And I think he's a decent guy. He follows my YouTube channel. I think he's a decent guy. You know, he calls things the way they are. And I call things the way they are. And sometimes they don't always agree with what I say. But... That's what a demo democracy is all about. We have different opinions and we, we come together and we discuss it and we find a common denominator. So I don't hate cops. I don't have an issue with law enforcement per se. I've got a clean record. I got zero points in my license. But I see a lot of things going on and I don't like it. And I'm at a stage of life where I want to do something about it. That's just how it is. And, you know, you people out there want to bury your head in the sand and say, and, and, and just take issue with me and ignore what's going on. You're the ones that are enabling bad behavior. You're the ones that need to start watching my videos and other videos out there and, and say, you know, maybe there's a problem. Maybe there's something going on. Maybe we need to take a look at it. And let's get together and see what we can do about it. It's a we thing. Okay, this... Uh one has to do with a video I did about an RV guy being harassed by Hazlitt Police Department. Now, I was there. I saw a man. I didn't see the man. I saw the, van, the RV sitting there, as I often see it once in a while. He wasn't doing anything. I didn't see it. the van was quiet. I didn't hear him out there making any racket. The engine wasn't idling. It wasn't doing anything. I think the guy was just sitting there minding his business. I think he goes over there and uses the... Uh, the Wi-Fi from uh, McDonald's. That's just my personal feelings about it. And somebody by the name of Day Dell responded. He said, did you ever think maybe the property owners call because they don't want the liability of someone camping on their property? If you care so much, let him park in your driveway. Well, it really uh, wasn't about him parking on somebody else's property. How do you know? How do you know he didn't go in the, the grocery store and come out and was doing eating his dinner or something? 
I quite frequently go into McDonald's over there. I frequently go over to the shop right, and then I come out of the shop right with something to eat or something to drink, and I sit in the park a lot there for, sometimes I'm there two, three hours. I'm working on a video, I'm using the Wi-Fi, I'm talking on the phone, it's, 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 you know, I end the end of my night. I get done with work at 11 o'clock and I'm parked over there sometimes just chilling out. And the reason I park there, because I'm in a public area and I don't have to worry about the cops coming up and harass me because I'm in the park a lot, but so what? And I have parked vehicles out there for more than one day because I had three vehicles and I couldn't keep all three vehicles where I needed to keep them, so I would park one over there. Nobody ever bought me. There's a vehicle sitting over there. It's been there for over a month now. So I don't think that is the case. I think that they went over to look at something or maybe somebody said something. Who knows? You know, they get these calls about suspicious people. That's their go-to excuse. But the point is, is that four police officers showed up, flashing lights in that guy's car, demanding the ID, and chasing them off. He wasn't bothering anybody. And that was the whole point, that you're sitting there minding your business. You can't even sit there mind your business anymore because all it takes is one jackass, see something, say something, dipshit to pick up the phone and call and then that gives the, the cops the, uh, the the go to excuse to go out there and harass a person and try to ID them and you know I, if, if the guy was breaking the law or doing something so bad they could have just arrested him Is you know the the property owner could send the tow truck over there in the middle of the night and start towing it they got a big sign on there that says who their tower is so I, I don't, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it's not possible, but I think it's high, highly unlikely what I, based on what I know about that park lot and that shopping center and what goes on over there. I think somebody just complained they didn't want to see an RV. He left. I've seen him back in that park a lot before. I saw him the other day. In fact, I tried, I was going to go over there and talk to him, but he took off before I could get to him and whatever. The guy's not bothered. What's the difference if he sleeps in his van overnight and he leaves? What liability is there? He's in an RV. What liability? Is it any different that uh, you fell asleep in your car after you ate lunch and you're sleeping there for two hours or something? You took a nap? This posting has to do with the video I did about Chancellor Nancy Cantor of Rutgers University. She had a little uh, tissy fit, hissy fit because uh, she feels she's above everybody else. She makes, uh, she makes $400,000 a year. That's why your tuition is so expensive. These uh, educators ripping people, ripping the, the, the college, the taxpayers, the, the, they're ripping the, you know, the system off. So this goes out to Peter Miller. He says, hey Gunnison, tell the truth. Wouldn't you love to see how Officer Dixon, that's Officer Dixon, the thug from uh, Millville Police who holds the, uh, he's the poster boy here in New Jersey for the most beaten people up, uh, would deal with this arrogant chancellor? He wouldn't have put up with her crap. Well, you know what? I agree. I think any uh, well-seasoned officer would not have put up with her nonsense, but I think because she is the chancellor. She is a, the, one of the top dogs over there, Rutgers, and this police officer knew who she was, and her lack of confidence in the matter caused her to lose control of the situation. I mean, personally, I think she should have told that woman to go shut up and go sit down, and if she doesn't shut up and sit down, she's going to get arrested for obstruction or interfering with administrative duties because she clearly was being disorderly. This post has to do with a follow-up story I did on Millville Police. Uh, once again, thugged uh, Dickhead, I call him Dickhead Dixon. Officer Dickhead Dixon and one of his uh, comrades there uh, beat somebody up again. So the, the, and that person was filing a lawsuit. That, so that's the second lawsuit that I'm reporting on that's going against that officer. And this was posted by Joseph Desmond. He says only good cop question mark is a dead cop F the police now I disagree with that I want to say a good cop is probably an unemployed cop this one has to do with a video I did about Monmouth Beach police getting a drone 
drones, that's plural, drones. So that they could fly the drones over the beach. Now, we all know everything the police do, every little gadget they buy is to help them generate revenue. And this drone is no different, but this drone also is, in my opinion, is violating people's expectation of privacy. You know, you're on a beach, you're out there in your bathing suit, you're not expecting something over above looking at you and recording you while you're laying down on your towel or hanging out with your your family or your kids or whatever you don't expect you gotta you know yeah you go out in public you have no expectation of privacy but i think on the beach there is an expectation of decency an expectation of respect i mean you don't sit on your towel and stare at the girl next to you even though you got a right to look wherever you want to look does that give you a right to do that no it doesn't you know it's one of those things where we have a right to free speech but that doesn't mean you run into a building and yell fire so i have a new uh subscriber who chimed in tim buck 2 g said i'm new to watching your videos i'm learning what i can from you also, I'm a New Jersey resident, too. I'm from Mount Holly, Burlington County. Anyway, yes, police need to get it together. And I think that pretty much sums it up in a nice way. Police out there need to get it together. And that's why I do this channel, this video, to help educate the community, help educate the police, and let them see what it is that their community is doing and help them understand that People are watching and people are talking. And uh, so thank you to Timbuktu-G for uh, subscribing to my channel. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that you're gathering, you're getting something from this. You're being enriched by watching my videos. And the other thing I wanted to talk about regarding this video that I did about the drones, it was, it was entitled, uh, let me see what I called this video here. I called it, hang on, Mammoth Beach Police Perverts Spy on Beach Goers. Now, right after I posted that video and I posted that link on the Mammoth Beach Facebook page, I got a little message. And let me bring up the My Messenger. And it comes up, I see this name, Thomas Walsh. Now, I don't know any Thomas Walsh. It was on June 18th that I received it. And uh, he says, John, I am the chief of police in Monmouth Beach. I would love to meet with you. I understand your criticism of the drone program. Much like you, I am a true patriot and believer in the Constitution. Let's get together and talk. I'm buying coffee let me know well I did send him a thing said I accepted his offer and that I would have to get back with to him but I did put a stipulation in it there that the conversation between he and I would have to be recorded and or live stream and he did reply back and said pretty much no problem but I like to talk to you privately first so I would throw this out to everybody out there. Do you think I should meet with the chief of police of Monmouth Beach? I've had offers before from chief of police to come down and see them. And uh, I'm always kind of hesitant. I don't know what they're up to. Am I being set up? That's always in the back of my head. Am I being set up? You know, uh, I do. I'm very critical of the police. I am very outspoken. Sometimes I'm not sure about these little invitations that I get. So you tell me, folks, should I go meet with Chief Walsh over at Monmouth Beach and have a little discussion with him? I thought maybe I'd just go over there and do a little auditing, First Amendment auditing of the police station and see how patriotic the chief is. And finally, this one is on Facebook. It had nothing to do with my Gunnison Undercover New Jersey Exposed page or my video channel. It had to do with a posting in the Kingsburg Happening Facebook page 
Apparently a while back somebody put a video up there of a Kingsburg police officer out playing basketball with some kids. Seems harmless enough to me. And this person, the whole purpose of this is what a good cop he was who are out there doing that. You know, Kingsburg are great cops and all that. And I responded, so in your mind, a cop out tossing the ball makes him a good cop. See, you have to look at the, the, the total sum of everything. You, just, you know, good people can do bad things and bad people can do good things. And just because this guy's out there throwing the ball around doesn't mean that he is, quote, a good cop. So I really was putting that question to her mind to see the question, just to, to question her thought process. And she responded, this is Lisa Smith, her name is. She says, John, the fact that he's taken time to acknowledge the children in town makes him pretty decent. I think a lot of us agree on that. It's a shame others must find reason to comment otherwise on what's supposed to be something positive. And this is something that I go up against all the time. If you don't follow the narrative that police are good and wholesome and lovely and, and you know, all warm and fuzzy, you will get attacked by these lily whites who think the police are there to protect them from all, from the boogeyman because we all know lily whites are afraid of the boogeyman and it just kind of started a whole thing here so amy michelle johnson responds back to lisa smith and she says only people that have trouble themselves with the law find negative in these posts we really shouldn't take the time to even pay any mind to them or their negative responses. So I responded to, to Amy Michelle Johnson. So you're saying those who have an opposing opinion to yours have trouble with police? I have a clean record and zero points on license, 20 some officers. And then I proceed to talk about 20 some officers in this county in the past five years were convicted of a crime. A drunken Long Branch cop a year and a half ago killed a woman on Ocean Avenue. A Long Branch cop recently fired and pleaded guilty of sexual contact. A Howell Township police sergeant Conte was arrested a few months ago for child predation. A Shrewsbury cop last fall, I believe it is, or last late last summer, was fired and charged with domestic violence. He stalked his woman and assaulted her friend or her family member. I don't know what it was. And then most recently, I reported on a secret police chief just cost the town's taxpayers $1 million. And he's still the police chief. Do you want me to continue? Amy Michelle responded, thank you, John, for these updates. Happy fourth to you. Kenneth Willem, yeah, we'll take your opinion into consideration. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Kenneth. You really should, you know. you. You have to hopefully see the good in all people, but be mindful that there are some bad people out there. And that's that. So, you know, I go on Facebook where the narrative is not necessarily my narrative. And when I question things, the, the bootlickers out there, I'm gonna call them the boot, the black tongue community. Let's call them the BT community, black tongue community will band together and attack me they'll call me a jerk they'll call me names they like calling names even though I don't call them I don't get on there and call anybody names I say things are I try to be factual as possible and be able to back up what I say and I'll finish up with this I get this message the other day let me see if I can find it here. I think it disappeared. Oh, I guess it's not there. It wasn't somebody I know. And they sent me a message and said, uh, if you don't like th this country, get the F out. So because I'm exercising my right to free speech and expressing my opinion, which may not necessarily be their opinion, that makes me a bad, makes me not like the country. I point out bad police behavior. I talk about it. 
I think my actions and my what I do on my channel here is to try to make this country a better country by getting rid of bad cops, helping the good cops, exposing these political turd nepotists that we have a whole swamp, deep, thick, smelly swamp full of them here in Monmouth County. Lots of nepotism out here and cronyism. That's what I do. I think that's what any good American would do. You voice your opinion, you try to make the place better. I mean, if we all had to follow one narrative and subscribe to one narrative or belief system, would that not be like a dictatorship? I mean, democracy is all about many different people and many different opinions. And the masses, you know, we vote and those who have the most those with the most uh, agree with a particular matter are the ones that have the voice. But that doesn't mean the masses shouldn't have to listen to the minority. You know, <clears throat> that's just the way it is. You know, if a good American it, it does address its government. When its government does bad, you stand up and you say something. That's what the United States Constitution is all about. It's all about stopping government overreach. It's about fighting back about corruption. Your rights, your Bill of Rights is there to protect you from the government. It's not to protect the government. It's to protect you. And so I disagree with anybody who says that I'm not an American and if I, and I don't like this country and I should get out of this country. Well, I got a message for you. Go fuck yourself. Simple as that. You don't like what I say? Don't read it. Don't listen to my channel. That's just the way it is. I'm going to continue to talk and I'm going to continue to express myself. And uh, as long as I got breath and I got a video camera and a YouTube channel, I'm going to continue. This is Gunners and Undercover. Till the next time, you know the drill. If you see something, say something back. If you see those stupid copaganda stories from coming out from your police department, respond to it. If you don't like what they're saying, you think it's BS, say something. That's what it's all about. If you don't say something, they 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 run the narrative. So you gotta say something. Don't be a don't be a wussy. Say something. And if you see a real ridiculous police department Facebook post, send it to me. I like to see it. If it's good, I'll do a story on it. And finally, make your rights strong again. Yeah. Look at that. Exercise them.